Hi, y'all. This is Mom History Lesson 4. Before we continue, I want to touch base on the Mom Heavenly Cities. In order for us to understand Mom ancestral history, we must know these places. When Mong Qingdan governed during Liao Dynasty, Beijing was known as the Southern Heavenly City, known as Najingcheng. The Upper Heavenly City was at Donghu Regional Area, now Eastern Inner Mongolia, known as Shaojingcheng. After Mong Jiesheng took over during Jing Dynasty, they named the Southern Heavenly City into Zhongdu Jingcheng. During the beginning of Yuan Dynasty, it was changed to Duandu Jingcheng. In short, it was also known as Dandu or Daindu. This is the Mong leader Kublai. He was known to be portrayed under multiple sources, and various characters were used to portray Kublai. However, this is an older portrait of our leader, Kublai. Here is a sketch photo of the Mong Forbidden City resided in Saimong Dondu Jingcheng. This is a photo of Kublai and his companions leaving the palace. In the background was the Forbidden City inside Duandu Jingcheng. Here is the Upper Mother Palace or Summer Palace known as Saonandu. It was north from Mong Duandu Jingcheng. Here is an example of how the building structures were like at Saonandu. These building structures are no longer existed. Only the bases of the ruins are still there. Okay, let us get back to where we left off. I want us to think about why many Hmong took refuge into the south, ancient Jiangxi regional forest during the fall of the southern portion of Yuan Dynasty. It was because during Yuan Dynasty, many Hmong were officials governing Yuan country in those regions. Also, we've learned that before Yuan Dynasty, many Hmong had already migrated to live in different parts of the south. Places that Hmong occupied were Jiangnan, Guangdong, Jiangxi, Sichuan, Yunnan. However, Hmong were the ethnic minority who came to live among the Nanman, Bai Ye, Dong Yi, Shu, and others. These people were the majority who are now mostly go by Han. They were the southern nation, and we will talk more about what happened to the ethnic minorities of the Nanman and Bai Ye people later on. It is important to know that present-day Vietnam is not Song Chao, or Mong call it Sao Chao. Sao Chao, Song Chao, was the southern part of present-day China, and their main capital was at Nanjing. Mong fled the Yellow River Basin and Sao Chao, Nanjing, into ancient Jiangxi regional forests was during the fall of Yuan Dynasty. After that, Hmong gradually settled into Xiang Regional Forest. Xiang Regional Area is present-day Hunan and part of northern Guangdong and northeast Guangxi. During that era, from 1373 to 1500, most of the male Nanman and Ma Yi history of Guizhou were not Hmong history. Those Hmong who took the last stand at Kunming, Yunnan, to preserve the Hmong Yuan country had already fled west. Some took refuge into Tibet and into Burma, 
Others took refuge into the mountains. Most Hmong who survived the war of the northern, central, and eastern regions took refuge into Jiangxi Regional Forest. All the historical literatures written about Sanmiao people of the Nanman by year and Dongyi up until 1500 AD were not Hmong history. For example, the Miaoyi history of Guizhou during the 15th century was not Hmong history. In 1458, there was a famine which caused food shortage. The Miaoyi, Yi people of Guizhou rebelled against the government. The ancient name Miao was referring to the Nanman, Yi, and Baiye people, not the Hmong people. Ming sent troops to fight the Man Yi of Guizhou. This rock here in this drawing is this rock. Once Ming government and their troops successfully suppressed the rebellion, they inscribed in this rock, Xue Zheng Bian Yi, meaning that forever to suppress the Yi. This was referring to the Ma Yi people. But because many more were grouped into male since 1957, people started to define Ma Yi history as male history, and many translated into being Hmong history. This is totally wrong. It wasn't until the 16th century that Ming government adopted a self-reliant army policy or soldier family policy. It required the government to resettle soldier families into ethnic minorities land. That way soldier families could take care of themselves and did not have to rely on the government. That situation created tension between the Hmong and the Ming government in Hunan, Xiang regional area. Most settled into the forests of Hunan and cleared those land for farming. So it wasn't right for the government and the Ming Shua to take away the Hmong land. Hmong at Western Xiang regional area then rebelled against the Ming government. That war took place for 70 years. It wasn't a small conflict. 70 years of warfare wasn't easy for either the Ming government or the Hmong people. Many Hmong then took refuge into the west, into Guizhou. Guizhou in ancient time means ghost region. As Hmong settled into eastern Guizhou and other Guizhou regional area, Miao Yi Ma Yi and other Nanman people started to label Hmong as Miao Si because Hmong were very different from those locals. Besides, Hmong men wore baggy pants and head turbans. They did not change the way to be like the majority which the men wear skirts. They settled into the canyons and mountains where they kept the distance from the original male of the Nanman and Bai Ye. So, Miao Si was a derogatory term against the Hmong, those Hmong who settled into Guizhou. Because of the warfare in Hunan, Ming government decided to build a wall along western Hunan to keep the Hmong from going back to the east. There are still sections of that wall that still exist. This photo is the restoration of that war for tourism. So after Hmong took refuge into eastern Guizhou, the region of Zhenyun to Kaili became known as Mindu or Mindu Jincheng. In Mandarin, it is known as Xiao Jincheng. When Hmong elders claim that Hmong ancestors came from Mongolia, or Shonan Du, 
they came from the north. When Mon said that they came from Da Chao, Duo Chao, they came from the Yellow River Basin and other northern region. When they claimed that they came from Sa Cha, uh, Nanjing, Duo Han De, they came from the the uh, eastern Yangtze River region. Mon fled out of those regions was during the fall of Yuan Dynasty. We previously covered that Mon came to govern Sa Cha, a southern part of China, Song Cha, and other western regions was during multiple eras. A lot of the Mon emittances of the West and their ancestors originally came from the north, the Yellow River Basin, and Sao Cha of Nanjing, Shanghai, and ancient Jiangxi. They took refuge into Xiang regional area. Xiang is present day Hunan. As we go back to visit Hunan, Jiangxi, Hubei, Anhui, Zhejiang, Shanghai, and Nanjing, there is no more Hmong emittance. There are only people who speak the Hmong language, also known as Samangyu or Hmong language. These people are mostly go by Han now. Hmong who stayed behind and survived that war or subsequent wars blended with these people. Mong or not Na Man Bai Ye Ma Yi Dong Yi These people are now going by Han. If Mong are these people, why Mong do not speak the Man Yu? And why Mong language is very different from these local Saman language or local Han languages. Mong were the ethnic minorities who came to govern over the southern nation. Once there's warfare, Mon were targeted and had to take refuge into the forest. Mon then took refuge into eastern Guizhou, Midu Jingcheng during the 16th century. Others migrated to live at the red and green river of Guizhou, and a few entered Wenshan of southeast Yunnan. That was 500 years ago. The Red and Green River is not in the south of southern Yunnan as claimed by many as a mistake. Those rivers are in Guizhou. Do not make the same mistake as Hmong and many claim that Hmong fought the Chinese. Chinese, the majority, or some male people and their descendants. If you define everything into Chinese, then that deviate from the authentic history of all the past nation and countries of present-day China, Mongolia, Siberia, and other regions. That also eliminate other people's history. For example, during the fall of Yuan Dynasty, Hmong took sides with the Ming people and fought the Hmong government. During the 70 years war in Hunan that forced Hmong into Guizhou, Hmong also took sides and fought each other. Other Hmong were working for the Ming government as well. During the fall of Ming country, the Hmong leader Wu Sangke led many Hmong and others into the southwest. Ming people called their main capital city Yingtianfu. Later, during Ming Dynasty, Ming moved their capital into Beijing, and they call it Beiping. Beiping is how Ming language addressed their northern capital. Hmong call it Beijing Cheng. Mong of the Southwest then supported Wu Sangke 
and broke away from Qing country. They named the country as another Zhou country. Hmong previously had a few Zhou countries. This Zhou country is known as Da Zhou, Da Zhou Gua, meaning the Grand Zhou country. So Hmong people still claim that since their ancestor left Duo Cha and Sa Cha has only been four to five generations. It was during the beginning of Qing Dynasty that other Hmong people came to follow those in the Southwest. An Shun and Guiyang Hmong elders of Guizhou still claim that their ancestor left Beiping into the Southwest. Beiping was now Beijing during Ming Dynasty. They left Beiping during the end of Ming Dynasty. This is Hmong history and not male history. Hmong are not Nama, nor Baiye, nor Dongyi or Samyo people. These people living along the Yangtze River and to the south are still there. Most are now going by Han. Ma Yi, now Han, living in Chu, Ye, Wu, Dongyi, and Shu regions have been there for the last 4,000 and 3,000 years. Hmong are the minorities who came from the north to govern these people during many kingdoms. So during Qing Dynasty, there were also other wars. One particular one is the Taiping Rebellion. Hmong of ancient Jiangxi were part of that uprise. Hmong of Guanxi and Guizhou also involved with Taiping Rebellion. When they occupy this white area, they named their country into Taiping Du Hua. They also named their capital into Du Jinsheng. While Taiping War is ongoing, rebellions also took place in Guizhou and surrounding areas. Hmong was part of those fightings, but they were all documented into Taiping and male rebellions later on. Once the eastern fighting was suppressed, mainly because European troops helped Qing government to fight that war, Qing government sent troops into Guizhou to quell the rebellions, and that war in Guizhou spread into Wenshan, Yunnan. These are photos of Taiping Rebellion. An estimated of 25 million people died during that time. Taiping women along with children were being killed by Hunan forces. This last photo are Hmong women prisoners. It clearly shows that Hmong was part of the Taiping Rebellion. Because of that war, Hmong fled Nanjing, Shanghai, and other eastern regions to follow the Hmong of the Southwest. Others also fled Guizhou into southern Yunnan, which mainly entered northern Vietnam, into northern Laos and Thailand. This is Hmong history, lesson four.